Good morning, everybody. I greet you all in the wonderful and peerless name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's so good to meet with you again. And uh, I'm sure all excited that we can now meet as a uh, local ecclesia again, uh, just having that fellowship with one another. Now, you know, I want to point to two things that emanated from the first session uh, uh, that we de dealt with last week. The second Adam, the Son of God, Jesus, came to overcome the transgression of the first Adam to make the dead alive and to make sinners righteous. Romans 5, verse 18 to 21. Now, also the clear distinction between justification, being declared righteous, and sanctification to be made righteous. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. We've been called to live out the holiness of God through displaying the righteousness of Christ and the Holy Spirit to strengthen and guide us on this journey. Now, this evening session, session 2 on page 19 of your little booklet, Jesus the Messiah, we'll be looking at John, the herald is born, a herald being a forerunner, an advanced messenger to be compared to, if we take, you know, the seasons, spring announcing summer. Now, as John would be the one pointing to the Son of God, the Messiah, the light of the world, appointed by the Most High to prepare the people of the silence of 400 years. They might be thinking, oh, is this Messiah still coming after 400 years? For Jesus' arrival. Now I'll immediately zoom into the three aspects I want to cover with you uh, this morning. Now the first would be trusting God's word leads to praise. Praise to the Almighty God. And that we will find in Luke 1 verses 59 to 66. Now the priest Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were righteous people. But they were old and yet they had no children. Sadly so. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah with the incredible news that Elizabeth would have a child, have a child, verse 18 to 17, instructed the frightened Zechariah the priest to name the son John. Now in Hebrew it would be Johannan, which signifies Yahweh is gracious. And gracious pointing to the grace of the Almighty Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, notice was, uh, no, though notice was given to Zechariah in the temple, uh, in the temple, when he was praying, burning incense, and though he had a firm belief that God has an almighty power and with him nothing is impossible, Zechariah responded in doubt instead of praise. And because of his response, he lost his ability to speak until all of Gabriel's words came true, and that's verses 18 to 20. Zechariah, though encouraged to the contrary, stuck to the name John in obedience to God. Verse 64. Now we also remember the father of the faith or started off the journey right in the Old Testament. Abram believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now Elizabeth's praise filled with the Holy Spirit was not directed to Mary, but the child confident that this child was the long-awaited Messiah. Even the baby's response was supernaturally prompted by the Spirit of God. Now, I just want to go to two verses in, in the Bible showing this. And this, the first one is to be found uh, in verse 15. And verse 15 said, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, that is John. He is never to take wine or other ferment to drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Now, where does it come from, even from birth? Look at verse 44. As soon as the sound of uh, Mary's greeting reached my ears, 
the baby in my womb leaped for joy. What a tremendous synergy. And when the Spirit of Holy Spirit is present, there's something happening. There's something happening in the atmosphere. The, even the baby within the womb was leaping because the Holy Spirit uh, was with, he, with that baby. And as the previous verse, he will be birthed with that of the Holy Spirit. Now, verses 46 to 55 reveals that Mary's heart and mind were saturated with the word of God and hence her praise too. Where a person is spirit-filled, it leads to spirit-filled worship and praise. My reference, Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 20. Now, the first was trusting God's word leads to, leads to praise, and I've just done that. The second, trusting God's word lead to salvation. In verse 68, Zechariah spoke prophetically of God who has raised up a horn of salvation, a horn of salvation, a symbol of strength in the house of David with its promise of salvation and that's reference I want to give you as John 1 verse 26 to 27 also the Abrahamic covenant referring to that verse 73 with its promise of salvation by grace and as I said John means Yahweh is gracious and now we speak of that grace again that was a covered in Genesis, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. And in verse 77, the forgiveness of sin is the very heart of salvation. So, what is the second? Trusting God's word leads to salvation. And we reach, need to reach people with a message of hope, the salvation that was brought about by this very baby to be born, Jesus Christ our Savior. So the preparation for the work of salvation was to be done by John the Baptist, verse 76. Now we come to the third aspect. I said two aspects. The first, trusting God's word leads to praise. Secondly, trusting God's word leads to salvation. And now number three, trusting God's word leads to serving, to serving God and serving others. John was the first to serve. And I've got a few references for that. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6. John 12 verse uh, 26. And then Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. And I just want to read some of it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way. For me, before me, and that is Jesus. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. Also Galatians 5 verse 3. And then Romans 12 verse 11. Romans 12 uh, verse, uh, Romans 12, verse 11. Let's just go quickly to Romans 12, verse 11. And this is what it says, Romans 12, verse 11. Uh, at least Romans 2, verse 11. Just for time, I'm just going to slip that verse. I think it's 2, verse 11, but just I'll come back to that now. Uh, the biblical injunction for us is to serve is in Matthew 28 verse 19. And I think we all know that verse very well. Matthew 28 verse. And that's the great commission that we need to make disciples of all people. And this is what it says in Matthew 28. Just to remind you of that again. Matthew 28 verse 11. Matthew 28 verse 19, sorry. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
and teaching them to obey everything God has commanded. The most noble act of serving, especially in the times we are currently facing, even with this pandemic, people need to hear the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Greatness comes when we, like John, say, I must decrease, Jesus must increase. John 3, verse 30. May God bless even as we study this. Let's pray. Father, you have kept your promises and provided redemption for your people in and through Jesus, your son. Thank you for sending the prophets from ancient times and onward through John the Baptist to describe the Messiah's mission in order to prepare your people for him. Help us by your spirit to lead sinners out of darkness and death by announcing the good news that light and life have come near to humanity in Christ. Amen. God bless as you'll be busy with the study this week. Amen.